Inclined planes are different. The object is no longer accelerating horizontally. It's going to be, in this case, rolling down a hill. So it's going to change how we deal with our vectors. But if we've been, if the setup of how we did the last few questions made sense, the same method will get us through this type of question. Always start with a free body diagram. And our free body diagram, uh, it says it's on a 30 degree incline, so I'm actually going to draw the incline. The 30 degrees fits in down there. The object is on the incline, I'm just going to draw it as a dot. In this particular one it says it's frictionless, so I'm picturing like those blue and red carts that we've used in physics. We've got one on the ramp, uh, on the track, the track is on an incline. Uh, it's one of the ones with good wheels so we don't have to worry about friction. There's only two forces then. The normal force by definition is always perpendicular to the surface. So the normal force is going to be pointed off on that angle like I drew it. Gravity is always, always vertical, so it's going to be straight down. We've got forces on a funny angle. What I talked about in the last section when the applied force was on an angle, we took, a, we took the components of the applied force because it was the one that was on an angle compared to the acceleration. In this case, the cart's going to accelerate in the plane of the incline. It's going to roll straight down the incline. That becomes sort of our important component. The normal force, by definition, it's already perpendicular to that. So I'm not going to take components of the normal force. But the gravity force, it's on a funny angle. Some of gravity is pulling the cart down the track, and another component of gravity is keeping the cart stuck to the track. So in a question like this where an object's on an incline, since it's moving down the incline and gravity's on a funny, in a funny direction compared to the incline, I need to take the components of gravity. The easiest way I found to do it is I'm going to shoot the normal force straight backwards. That line I've drawn in purple is the component of gravity that's perpendicular to the incline. So I'm going to draw FG, I'm going to call it FG with a little perpendicular sign. The other side of my triangle goes across here. That component that I've drawn, happened to be in red, is FG parallel to the incline. The 90 degree fits in down here. The perpendicular and the parallel are 90 degrees to each other. What I've drew in purple, FG perpendicular, that's what triggers, triggers the normal force. And what I've drawn in red, FG parallel, that's actually what's pulling it down the hill. Because it's on a 30 degree incline, it's not going to accelerate at the full 9.8. It's going to accelerate lower, depending on how big that FG parallel part is. To get components, we need an interior angle. So we've got a little bit of, of work to do here. Um, first thing to notice is that FG perpendicular, by definition, is 90 degrees to the incline. So there's a 90 between the ramp and FG perpendicular. I'm going to get rid of that 90 mark because it's kind of in my way. Um, interior angle rule, I know that this part has got to be 60 degrees. We've got a 90 down here, a 30 over there, they have to add up to 180, so 30 in the one corner means there's got to be a 60 in the other. We said that FG perpendicular was 90 degrees to the incline, so that means the angle up top here has to be 30. If we always draw it the same way, we're always going to get the same outcome, that the angle of the incline, the 30, fits into our gravity triangle in the same spot. If we shoot the normal backwards, the same 30 is going to show up between the perpendicular component and gravity. Now, even though it looks weird, this is a kind of same setup as what we did before. We called it vertical and horizontal before. Now we're going to call it perpendicular and parallel. In the perpendicular component, That'll help me figure out the normal force. In this case, it's not flying off the ramp. It's not falling through the ramp. So the normal force is just completely balancing out FG perpendicular. I don't really need FG perpendicular for this one. Um, all it does is tell me the normal force. Since there's no coefficient of friction, I don't really need the normal force. But just since it's our first one, um, if we look at that triangle, FG perpendicular is adjacent to the angle. So that's a cosine relationship. What's kind of neat about this is when you have an object on an incline, the normal force on it is actually a little bit lighter. 
If you were on a hill, rolling down a hill, you would feel a little bit lighter than you would when you're on flat ground. In the parallel component, that's where part of gravity is actually making this thing accelerate. So I'm going to set up F net equals MA. In this one, I've only got one force pulling it downhill, so that's uh, it's my only force, so it would be my positive force. It's FG parallel, and that's equal to MA. FG parallel, look at the purple, black, red triangle. It's opposite my angle, so it's a sine relationship. And that's equal to MA. What's cool about this, uh, with no applied force to worry about, the M's actually cancel out. So the acceleration is just G sine 30. If you get another question that's as simple as this, just a an object on a frictionless incline, the acceleration is always going to be 9.8 multiplied by the sine of the angle. In this case, the nice 30 degree angle, that works out to be 4.9. The key to this one was we had to get components. Even though you may have thought that the normal force was on a funny angle, the normal force is actually perpendicular to the direction of the acceleration, so it's fine. Gravity is the one that's on a funny angle. Some of gravity is pulling it down the hill. Some of gravity is keeping the object stuck to the track. So we're going to find components of gravity and use that to solve the problem.